In this video we're going to take a look at some of the crypto challenges from the Hack the Box Cyber Apocalypse 2021 CTF. It's still the first day of the CTF, it's running for five days total, but I want to try and record some challenges as I go along rather than having a big pile of challenges to, to record at the end which aren't still fresh in my mind. The first challenge is called Nintendo Base 64. It says aliens are trying to cause great misery to the human race by using our cryptographic technology to encrypt all our games. Fortunately, the aliens haven't played CryptoHack, so they're making several new mistakes. Therefore, they've given us a chance to recover our games and find their flags. They've tried to scramble data on a Nintendo 64, but don't seem to understand that encoding and ASCII art aren't valid types of encryption. So, we have a downloadable part for the challenge. I've got that downloaded already, so let's go and take a look at it. We have this output.txt, so if we open it up, maximize it, and we'll see that it spells out Nintendo. Now I was immediately confused by this, kind of wondering how I was going to get this into the right format in terms of the ordering of this and all the spacing. But luckily I um, just took it straight to Base64 Decode and just pasted it in as it was and um, the result was clearly a Base64 encoded string so grab that as well, decode it again. We get another one, let's do that again and just keep doing this I think like 10 times or something you could I guess script this but it didn't take too long there we go we've got our first flag the second crypto challenge is called phase stream 1 and it says the aliens are trying to build a secure cipher to encrypt all our games called phase stream They've heard stream ciphers are pretty good. The aliens have learned an XOR operation which is used to encrypt plain text with a key. They believe that XOR use, using a repeated 5 byte key is strong enough to build a strong stream cipher. Such silly aliens. Here's a flag encrypted this way earlier. Can you decrypt it? Hint, what's the flag format? So it's telling us there it's the 5 byte key. Let's take this hex string and go to Cyberchef. and I'm going to paste that in there. We might be able to brute force uh, I suppose it's 5 byte key. Well okay let's um, convert this from hex anyway and then we're going to want to do our XOR so we'll grab our XOR and it's given us a hint there that what's the flag format so we know that the flag begins with CHTB so we can go ahead and we can change this and say CHTB and then a curly brace and then we've got the first five bytes it's XORed first five bytes of this with the CHTB and because XOR is a reversible operation we can now just take this my key and now we'll use that as the key instead and we've got our second flag the next challenge is called phase stream 2 and the description says the aliens have learned of a new concept called security by obscurity Fortunately for us, they think it's a great idea and not a description of a common mistake. We've intercepted some alien comms and think they're XORing flags with a single byte key and hiding the result inside 9,999 lines of random data. Can you find the flag? So we have this file to download. You can open us this up, output.txt. It's got nearly 10,000 lines of these uh, hex values in, 52 characters long each time and we're told that each each of these lines then is XORed with the same single byte key and one of the lines will contain the flag. Now I was kind of hoping that I'd just be able to take this to Cyberchef like the last challenge and convert it from hex and then brute force the key seeing it was only a one byte key. But yeah this didn't work for me so I did try from hex and then we can XOR brute force and try to look for CHTB uh, but we don't find anything even just HTB I guess maybe it ne the XOR needs to be done first but then if we XOR it first we can't look for the the crib so um, that didn't work for me anyway I also tried with the XOR tool so using XOR tool let's have a look XOR tool dash H so I tried like XOR tool dash P for the plain text that we're looking for and then we can put in CHTB and dash X for the uh, to say it's the hex input 
dash C for the character, the most common character, which I put down as an underscore, so you can put this in as hex, I did back, backslash x 2f, but I also tried it with spaces and null bytes and stuff as well, and then pass in the output.txt, but um, it didn't work for me, again, so I ended up just putting together a script for this, so let's open this up, xor.py. And I've imported Pwn tools just because I'm using the read function here and info and XOR and unhex. Uh, some handy functions that come in the in the Pwn tools library. Uh, although you can do it quite easily without without that as well. But I seem to have less problems than using Python's inbuilt libraries. Uh, so we we read the file anyway and split it into lines. So we have all of the lines from here as individual strings, and then. We're looping through every possible byte, and I just print out here just to say that which byte we're currently XORing against. And um, so for each line, then all 10,000 lines, we'll XOR it against each byte, and then we'll look for chtb in the string. And once we find it, we'll print that out. So if I go back to the terminal here and run python xor.py. Uh, it takes a little bit of time, not too much. Obviously, it's having to go through 10,000 lines for each byte that it's XORing with. Okay, so I sped that process up for you, but um, you can see after a while we get our 45 is the is what we need to XOR it with to find our needle in the haystack. I should have really checked what line that was as well, but uh, oh well. The next challenge is called Phase Stream 3, and it says the aliens have learned the stupidity of their misunderstanding of Kirchhoff's principle. Now they're going to use a well-known stream cipher, AES in CTR mode, with a strong key, and they'll happily give us poor humans a source code because they're so confident it's secure. So we have some files to download again. Let's go and take a look at these locally. We have a output.txt, which let's print that out. And so we've got two two values here. We've got two hex strings, and then we have the source code as well. So we'll open that up. So as was mentioned in the description, we have AES being used in CTR mode here with the counter, new counter being set. We have a key which is being set here as 16 random bytes, so we're not going to be able to easily brute force that. But if we look down at the code here, we can see that there's a plain text string which was encrypted, and then we have the flag.txt as well which is encrypted. So presumably these are the two strings that we have in our output.txt. One of them is the encrypted test, and one is the encrypted flag. So let's go and have a look first of all at AES CTR mode. So when this loads up, we'll see some common questions asked here about AES 128-bit CTR mode, which is exactly what we're using, and whether it's secure. I mean, you can see it's not secure at all. The implementation contains many basic errors. One example is using an insecure random number generator, which utterly destroys the security of the algorithm. Let me bring up uh, an article, a st uh, Stack Exchange question, which I used while solving this. So let's go and see what the issue is and how we might be able to retrieve the flag. And we can see here somebody's asked the question then, why must IV and key pairs not be reused in CTR mode? And uh, there's a really good explanation here explaining how the attacker might be able to ret retrieve some plain text. So we can see that problem here. So CTR mode encryption is effectively, so cipher text is equal to the plain text XORed with the function of a key and an IV, where that's just basically described there. The problem is if we have two plain text encrypted with the same key and IV values, which we know we do here because this is all assigned once, it's not changed each time, and then we encrypt two different pieces of data which we have access to to both of the cipher text. So if an attacker, us, gets access to two pairs, which we have, then we can assume that these two pairs are c1 is equal to, so ciphertext1 is equal to plaintext1 xord with this function, ciphertext2 is equal to plaintext2 xord with this function, 
Now, if we have both of these ciphertexts, then ciphertext 1 XORed with ciphertext 2 is equal to uh, plaintext 1 XORed with plaintext 2. So then we can derive the value from there. So let's go and let's go and test this out just to give this. Let's uh, open up Cyberchef and we'll go and try and XOR this now. So we're going to take a copy. Let me open up. Uh, we'll take a copy of our two hex values and we're going to XOR these two together. XOR our two ciphertexts to get our two to get our not not our two plain text but the result of our two XORed plain text. Uh, let me let me start doing this so it'll make a bit more sense as we go along. So we have an XOR here. We also want to convert. I'll convert this from hex. And so we're converting from hex. We're XORing and we want to XOR this value which is our long string, the no right of private conversation. And we want to XOR it with our other ciphertext which is our flag. So I'm going to put that in as the key. Now we're seeing that there's nothing it doesn't look like there's anything of use here, but really what the result is, it's not it shouldn't be our plain text. It should be our plain text flag XORed with our plain text message. So how do we get back our plain text flag? Well we know if we XOR the XOR is a reversible operation, so we'll just take this plain text and XOR it with our flag plain text and that will retrieve the value for us. So that'll retrieve the key for us. So uh, I'm going to add another XOR operation. We need the two XORs. Paste that in there. We'll change the encoding and then you'll quickly see that we've got back our flag which was hack the box reused key attack. The next challenge is called phase stream 4 and it says the alien saw us break phase stream 3 in a proposed a quick fix to protect their new cipher. So again we have the downloadable challenge. Let's go and have a look at it. And we have a Python file again and an output.txt. So uh, just like in phase stream 3 we had the the test message which was encrypted and then we had the flag that was encrypted as well. But now if you go and have a look at the Python code it's pretty much the same. We have our encrypt, everything is the same um, at the top half and our flag bits the same. The only difference is instead of the actual test quote that was being encrypted we just that's being read from a file as well. So if we remind ourselves from the last example, let me bring this up again. So if we remind ourselves of the issue um, as to why we can't reuse the same IV and key pairs in CTR mode of AES, the problem was that uh, the, the encryption here is effectively ciphertext is equal to plain text XORed with the function of the key in IV and if these are reused to produce multiple ciphertexts, in our case we have two ciphertexts so we have the flag which is encrypted, we have the test quote as we did last time and because we have access to both of those we can XOR them together and the result will be the plain text flag XORed with the plain text message. So that that means obviously that we can reverse the operation because in the last case we knew what the plain text message was so we could XOR it even though we didn't know what the plain text flag was we could XOR the we could XOR that together and that would retrieve our plain text flag the problem is this time we don't have the plain text test quote right so we can do the same thing again we can XOR both the ciphertext together and that'll get us plain text 1 XOR with plain text 2 the problem is we don't know what plain text 1 or plain text 2 is in order to reverse that operation so hopefully that makes sense. Let's go and open up Cyberchef and talk through how how best to solve this or how I solve this. So let's start by just doing everything that we did in the previous example. So we converted from hex and then we got our presumably the first the first string there is the test quote encrypted and the second is the flag. So we grab our doesn't really matter which way around here. I've I've grabbed probably the test string and we're converting it from hex and then we're going to do an XOR and in the XOR in the last example we grabbed the flag here and performed the XOR and then the result of this we want to we want to get another XOR basically so so in our previous example 
we XOR the encrypted encrypted message with the encrypted flag. We get back the plain text flag XORed with the plain text message. And then all we needed to do was insert the plain text message here, and that would then retrieve the flag again. But obviously we don't know in this case what the plain text message is. So how can we do this? Well, we know what the flag is going to begin with. It's going to be CHTB and the curly brace. So let's do that and change that to UTF. And you see here that this is, we have I space ALO. So now we know that we can reverse this the other way around to get HTB, CHTB there, right? So now I can change this and make that the key. And this is the beginning of our flag. So we know that the key begins with this this value. So from here, um, I basically went through this kind of semi semi manually and just kind of thought, well, what does what's this likely to? Um, what 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 words could this possibly be? So I quickly found I alone, and then once we get to the next stage, we know that there's going to be a space following that as well, but we have no way of knowing what the next word can begin with. We can kind of predict what the next letter in a word might be, but we've got no idea what the next word could begin with. So what we can do in this case is it looks like on the flag side, we could probably guess what's going to come next because it's in the middle of a word. So it's likely to be maybe an I for string or an E for stream or an O for strong. So we can take this instead and use this to try and work out on this side. So we'll test out stream and we'll see does that match up and it shows here I alone can. So again that's looking good. We know it's likely to have an underscore as well. So there we've got some more of this. So now we'll just take this and copy it and replace replace this side because it looks like we know what this word is going to equal. So we now have I alone cannot. And then again we can put a space but we don't know what the next word is going to begin with. So we can take this uh, part of the flag and now we know that obviously this is going to be ciphers or cipher uh, it looks like ciphers and then an underscore so it looks like this word is going to be changed so let's grab that and we can basically just keep going through in that fashion let me do a little bit more uh, so again we've got to a new word here so now we can say this is likely to be the or stream ciphers will uh, stream ciphers with yeah it was with I alone cannot change the uh, again we can put an underscore so there we've got the now and we would need to swap it back or uh, grab the that part of the key there and we can basically keep going through that in this fashion I got through to um, I alone cannot change the world and once I got to this point, I just googled that phrase and we quickly find this quote from Mother Teresa. So I'll go and paste the whole thing there and we get most of the flag back. Um, we didn't get the whole thing, but I just guessed from here. I just took this string and then added on plain text attacks. And that was how I solved this challenge. I'd be interested to see if there's a better way to do it, um, if anybody had a more automated way, but I think that's kind of a good way of just going through and um, you can either guess what the next character on the flag is going to be or the next character in the, in the phrase depending on whether you're in the middle of a word or at the end of a word.